yeah, this question here. Because uh, this one in particular kind of does involve a lot of uh, technical working through. I do link you to pages which I think will be helpful if you haven't had to deal with a scientific notation before. Um, so, you know, there's a help provided there um, once it loads. And, uh, but I want to also have a kind of video resource um, so that there are alternate formats I can provide. Um, and in this question in particular, um, so I do try to help with this. And then you will, as you read through it, I think you will realize that none of the formulas that are directly given here actually helps you directly. You have to do a little bit of algebra because it tells you, gives you these expressions. It gives you something that relates the speed of light to the wavelength and the frequency. So if you have the wavelength and you have the frequency, then you calculate, you can calculate the speed of light. And it also gives you something that will give you the wavelength once you have speed of light and the frequency. Um, neither of those two that relate directly. You kind of have to do a little bit of algebra to solve either one for frequency. And if you can do it, great, good job. <laughs> um, that works great. Now, uh, this class, uh, my goal is to do as little math as possible, and that includes any level of algebra that, so uh, if you look at the hint carefully, you will see that I did that algebra for you. Uh, there's the expression for frequency in terms of speed of light and wavelength, so you can use it directly there. So let me use that expression that's given there. So uh, with that, the frequency, oops, uh, the frequency that I'm looking for is uh, speed of light. See, uh, so let me write that down first. Speed of light divided by wavelength. So let me write down this speed of light in the, uh, in the scientific notation. So in scientific notation is a three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Um, and the wavelength, I'm given it here, 633 nanometers. And then he says, remembering one nanometer is equal to 10 to minus nine meters. So the wavelength here should be 633. And then it's not just a meter, it's a, uh, in, so, so it's a 633 nanometers. And with this unit of nanometer, what you should be thinking of it as is something that multiplies to this number. Uh, and the way it multiplies is one nanometer is 10 to minus nine meter. So that's what I'm gonna multiply here, 10 to minus nine meter. And um, if, I guess this is still a little bit of algebra. If you do the algebra, the meters cancel. You get one over second, which is the unit of a hertz. Um, and uh, I think since your textbook gives you kind of a step-by-step -step process to how to do this by hand, let me demonstrate this with a calculator. Uh, this uh, on-screen calculator I have, it's uh, similar to a lot of scientific calculators. So I think if you have a calculator like this, then it will be something useful to have seen demonstrated. So I'm gonna just actually do this number, divide by this number, and there's a special notation in calculator that'll help you express these numbers uh, compactly. So I'm gonna do three, that's the leading number here. And a lot of calculators have a special button for expressing this power of 10. Um, on this calculator, it's represented with this button, EXP. On other calculators, it might be capital E, or it might be two capital E's. It's the E notation that allows me to compactly write down three times 10 to the power of eight. So the number I put there, eight, uh, this uh, expression here means three times 10 to the power of eight. So that's my numerator. All right, let me divide it by my denominator, and you see the number change um, in the way that it's supposed to. Okay, divide by 633, and I'm using this notation again. I'm gonna 
I enter the power. And I think the order I have to do it is I have to enter nine first, and then using this, change its sign to minus. So what this is saying is 633 times 10 to the minus nine. And I type in equals. That's the calculation it's done. And this is the result it has. Um, can, uh, yeah. Let me just leave it there. Yeah. yeah, let me just leave it there. I mean, it's a lot of zeros. Um, so uh, let me just count here. Three, six, nine, ten, 12. Um, so in the kind of uh, semi-scientific notation, or what's sometimes called the engineering notation, this is, uh, I'm gonna put this on the on my second screen so that I can look at it as I'm copying it. Um, so in the engineering notation, what this is, is a 473, and I'm gonna put the decimal here, 933, and I counted the 12 zeros, the times the 10 to the 12, a one over a second, which is unit of hertz. So what you now have to do is uh, convert it to the unit of terahertz. And I think for the purpose of this question, um, you, you kind of see, especially if you're writing this in engineering notation, you can see this quickly here. It's already in units of 10 to the 12 hertz. So it's already in the units of terahertz. So I think I'm gonna make use of that and just to write this down as my answer. And uh, you know, there's other, I think your textbook actually shows you how to do the, the prefix conversion calculation. Um, you won't really be required to do anything like this in any of the exams. So if you don't know how to do that um, on an exam, that's fine, because you won't be required to do it anyway. 